Hey guys, Abel here back with another video and today I'm going to do something which honestly I have been planning to do for a year, maybe for longer, and that is a full day of eating type video of sorts. Now it's not quite that, but it's going to be as close to that as it's ever going to get on this channel because honestly what ended up happening is I actually did start making that full day of eating video. So I started recording clips where I'm sitting at the kitchen table and I'm showing my meals and explaining what I'm eating and man, it is a lot harder than I believed it would be. Before that, I thought that, well, these full day of eating videos, they are such mindless entertainment, there is zero value in them, very little information, it's so much more work and there is so much more value in recording these long form type videos where I'm explaining some concept in detail. And then I had to realize that, man, the camera work and the recording skills that are required to make a video like that are a lot higher than I believed previously. Like, first of all, you have to kind of fit everything into the kitchen. Like right now, I have this studio light thingy that is shining the light on me. You have to fit all of that into the kitchen. Then you also have to place the camera stand somewhere. In the meantime, of course, you kind of have to make sense. So you kind of just talk some random bullshit. You have to kind of explain things in a way that at least makes some sense. Then of course, you also have to pay attention that you don't look like a complete moron in front of the camera yourself which for me is actually surprisingly hard. And also, I don't actually love being in front of the camera. I've gotten used to it over time, but there's a big difference between getting comfortable in front of the camera in one specific kind of context, which is kind of the context that I've gotten used to, which is the camera is there, I'm sitting here, I'm looking into the camera and I'm explaining something versus the camera being in kind of an unusual position. It's filming you from unusual angles. You have to stand up immediately. Your whole body language changes, the way you're speaking changes. It's a lot harder than I thought. So it's not going to be an actual full day of eating video. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to explain how my diet and my day-to-day -day kind of eating behavior looks like. I'm going to explain how my food choices kind of look like day-to-day, -day, what my goal is for this phase that I'm in, in terms of body composition, what I'm trying to achieve there, and how I'm picking my foods and my meal times and lots of other things to accomplish those goals. So I'm going to explain all of that. And in the meantime, I'm going to include some of those amazing clips that I managed to record while I was attempting to make this full day of eating video. Okay, so that's how things are gonna go. So first of all, some context. What am I actually trying to accomplish at this moment in time? Well, if you remember, or if you have been following my channel from before, I completed a fat loss phase. I lost quite a bit of weight and quite a bit of fat, dropped around 20 pounds, and I got fairly lean. It's hard to tell exactly what the body fat percentage is, but probably I got to a body fat that would be actually below 10%, so very lean. Basically, my goal was to see my abs without flexing them, which for me is very hard. I know a lot of people who actually have really good abs while being way higher in body fat than I am. They have kind of more blocky abs that protrude through the fat layers even when they are not that lean. I don't have that. So for me to have some semblance of ab definition, even without flexing my abs, I have to get fairly, fairly lean. So that's where I got to. And my goal was to simply maintain after that. So I did not plan on going on a gaining phase or a lean bulk or anything like that. I just simply wanted to maintain my body fat. And so that's what I did basically for the past four months. Now, I didn't quite do that, so if I'm being absolutely honest, which why wouldn't I be, I'm not at my absolute peak cleanness. I did most likely put back on some body fat. I can clearly see that I am just not as vascular and not as clearly defined as when I was back then, but I'm close enough to that point to where I'm actually comfortable saying that, yeah, I kind of maintained my body fat since then. And so basically for the past four months, that's what I've been doing and that's still what I'm doing today. I'm just looking to maintain and that applies to both my body composition, so body fat levels, and also to my training. So I'm not really looking to progress with anything crazy much. I'm just trying to not regress in the gym and I'm just trying to not put on fat basically. So I'm not trying to get leaner and I also try to not get fatter, of course, in the meantime. That is basically the goal. 
And I also think that's going to remain to be my goal for the remainder of the summer. And then maybe in the autumn, early winter period, I'm actually gonna go on a bulk, a lean bulk, lean gaining phase. At that point, I'm going to kind of switch strategies. I'm probably going to start to track my calories and I will become much more purposeful in the gym. But uh, for now, that's not the case. Now, there is one last thing that I want to say on the whole phase that I'm in and my goals is that to me, maintenance does not mean actually being at the same exact energy intake at all times. So my calorie intake has to be the same from Monday till Sunday. And it also doesn't necessarily mean that my body composition has to remain exactly at the same spot at all times. So basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to hover around a certain body composition and I don't mind if during certain periods I slightly dip below that or over that. I have this one spot that I'm trying to maintain and I'm kind of yo-yoing around it constantly in a very narrow range. Now I know when I'm saying yo-yoing then everybody is associating to yo-yo dieting. It's not really what I'm doing, but basically what's happening is my calorie intake is kind of like this over time and it roughly results in, in the long term, in me maintaining this body composition. So as I'm speaking here, you're seeing some clips of me, which are all shot in the changing room of my gym, all after my workouts. And as you can see on some of these clips, I'm slightly leaner than on other clips. And basically that's exactly what's going on. Some mornings I wake up and I'm like, holy shit, I look shredded. And then on other mornings, I'm like, oh man, I'm holding something. Maybe I actually put on some body fat. Maybe I'm just a bit bloated. Let's see what happens. And then kind of over time, based on the feedback that I'm seeing visually and also based on how my hunger levels are fluctuating over time, I'm kind of auto-regulating things so that I roughly always end up staying in the same spot. So to me, really, that is what maintenance is. I really wanted to make this something that is sustainable. And part of that sustainability is that I don't put really hard limits on myself. So I allow some fluctuation in both my calorie intake and also in my body fat levels. And so long as in the long term, I'm maintaining a look and a body fat level and the level of leanness that I'm happy with, I'm satisfied with the outcome. Now to finally make the transition into how my actual diet looks like, I want to preface that as well by saying that what I'm doing at the moment is something that I've only been doing for the last month or so. So I have been on this kind of maintenance setup for the past four months, but my strategy has not been identical throughout those four months. So I tried all kinds of setups throughout this time. I tried to first kind of just follow a meal plan. So as you might know, I had a meal plan at the end of my diet, which was put together based on numbers, of course. So I knew my calorie intake, my protein intake. Those were the two most important things, of course. Based on that, I had a diet template. So I was basically eating the same stuff day to day. And so essentially I had a meal plan that I was following. And when my diet ended, I kept following that meal plan, but I just added some more stuff to it to put myself roughly at maintenance. And I was doing that for a while. Then later on, I switched certain things out. I was not following that exact kind of meal template. I was experimenting with certain new foods that I wanted to include. And so I was doing that for a while. Then at some point I actually had just a weekly average calorie goal. So I wanted my weekly average calories to fall within a certain range. And as long as that happened, I was happy with that, but I did allow myself to fluctuate day to day. I did that for a while. And what I'm doing now is something different. Now, the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing at the moment and not those earlier things is not because I could realized that those previous approaches were stupid or there was anything wrong with them. I think all of those were completely fine. I just preferred to experiment with something else and see how this current setup would work. 
And so far, I'm actually loving it. So this is what I have been doing for the past month or so. But in the future, I might try something different again. So I'm just saying that because it's important at all times when you're hearing someone doing something in a certain way, especially with their diet and food and how we interact with food is such an individual thing that it's really important to not put any one approach on a pedestal. There are many, many ways to win at this game and there are many, many ways to maintain your body fat percentage and you just have to try different things and kind of see what works best with your own individual psychology, logistics, and many other things. So for this moment in time, this works great, but I just really thought that this would be important to address before I get into the specifics, because I know that as soon as I do that, I will start getting a lot of reactions like, man, your approach seems to be unsustainable. I think it's stupid. I don't think it's gonna work for most people. And then I'm also gonna get comments which will say, well, I'm definitely gonna give your method a shot. So, you know, both reactions are fine, but you know, just think for yourself a little bit before you make those comments because I'm not you, so what works for me might not work amazingly well for you. The way I'm doing things is not the exact method that I'm suggesting to clients or people that consult with me. This is just something that works for me, but I'm not gonna keep beating the dead horse here. So with that, how do I actually eat day to day? Well, first of all, I actually don't track calories at the moment. So I'm no longer tracking what I'm eating. I don't know exactly what my calorie intake is. The only things that I'm trying to quantify day to day is that I'm trying to hit a protein minimum. So I'm trying to get in around 150 grams of protein at least. More protein is fine, but at least that much I do try to get in consistently. And I also try to make an effort to not go too low in fats. So I'm trying to get in at least around 50 grams of fat a day. That over time, I just found to be kind of a good minimum intake to shoot for for me. Otherwise, I would tend to have a tendency to go a bit too low in fats just because I like so many of those foods that are high volume, like fruits and veggies and lean protein sources, all kinds of awesome low fat dairy sources. And it's really easy for me to actually go super, super low in fats. And what tends to happen is that I feel fine for a while. Actually, appetite is pretty well controlled. And then all of a sudden, I just start to not feel very well. You know, my libido goes down. All of a sudden, I start getting like really weird random hunger pangs and hunger attacks, which otherwise don't happen if I have a consistent meal schedule. But then it starts happening and all kinds of other weird symptoms. So... I did find over time that going too low in fats is just not a good idea. And I think that is just kind of good advice in general. Don't slash your fats very, very low for prolonged periods of time. And besides that, I'm also counting the number of meals that I have per day, which at the moment is actually three meals a day, which again is something that has changed over time. So I had a period of time when I was eating four meals a day, actually that lasted for quite long. And for the past month or so, I have been only eating three meals a day. And for the time being, it works great. Now, another thing which sort of moderates this whole theme of I'm not counting calories and I manage to stay lean is the fact that my food selection is very consistent day to day. So basically, if you were to look at the meals that I'm having day to day, with the exception of one meal of the day, but in the other two meals, if you were to look at the foods that I'm eating, you would see that I'm basically eating the same stuff every day. And that is for the simple reason that I really like these foods. Now, of course, I'm choosing them consciously, so I'm not just choosing foods that taste good, but I'm also choosing foods that are low enough in calorie density, that are high enough in protein, but low enough in calories, that are high enough in volume, but low enough in calories, that are good enough in the calorie and macros front, but are not too tasteless, so I actually enjoy eating them. So all in all, my food selection is one that really satisfies me. So I'm eating satisfying foods, which is something that I talked about in the past. So if you remember a couple of videos ago, I talked about the fact that you should be eating satisfying foods. You shouldn't be eating bland foods because bland foods are those that might make it easier for you to hit your calorie goals. It's unlikely that you will overeat on them 
but they also taste like crap and you don't feel satisfied after a meal. Then we also have trigger foods, which taste awesome, but it's really, really hard to control your calories with them because after finishing a meal that is consisting of these foods, you just want to eat more and more and more. And in between, we have this beautiful sweet spot with satisfying foods, which make it possible for you to not overeat, to only eat as much as what is conducive to your goals, but also enjoy yourself. And my food selection is 100% fulfilling that criteria. So what foods am I eating day to day? I can basically list them off the top of my head. And here it goes. I'm eating cucumbers, tomatoes, mushrooms, zucchini, strawberries, raspberries, honeydew melons, carrots, some sour cherries, not a lot because they mess up my stomach. Unfortunately, I cannot eat watermelon, which is a real shame because now they are in season and they look amazing and I love watermelons, but if I just eat a little bit of that, my stomach goes to, well, like you don't want to know what happens to my stomach when I eat watermelon, that's the point. Those are basically my carb sources in a nutshell. That's basically what I'm eating for carbs every day. And then as my protein sources, I eat Airmans or Airmans protein puddings. They're really, really awesome. The macros are amazing and they also taste phenomenal. The texture is also phenomenal. I'm eating a lower fat cottage cheese type of thing. They call them urda over here. And then I consume some condiments that are kind of staples every day. So I eat some lower calorie kind of chili hot sauce type of thing and this Tabasco sauce type of thing as well. And those are my staples, I think. I believe that I didn't forget anything. Those things are in my eating plan every single day. Now, those are two meals out of three. So in two meals out of the three that I have each day, you will see some combination of these foods. Now, there is one third meal, which is the only meal of the day, which I'm not eating on my own, or at least I'm not preparing it on my own. And there is lunch, which I have with my wife. And it's still super weird to say my wife. You get used to calling her my girlfriend or fiance eventually and now wife. But anyway, so that meal is going to change day to day. So we will have either poultry or some sort of red meat or some kind of seafood, which could be some fattier fish or some leaner fish, or it could be some more exotic thing like shrimp or mussels or squids or something like that. Basically what happens is each day before both of us get home, she gets home a bit before me and she will just text me and will ask me, hey, so would you like pork or salmon for lunch? And then I will say, oh, whatever, either one will work, I don't know, let's say pork. And then that's what we will have for lunch. And then as a side dish, it kind of depends on the day. Uh, many times we will actually just have some really big salad, but we will have days when we will have some more starchy stuff in there as well. And um, that is going to be a bit more variable day to day. So that is a little bit of added flexibility in my day to day eating plan. But the other two meals are always a combination of these staple foods that I mentioned before. Now, to give you a bit more information about how I'm structuring things and how I'm organizing my meals, if I'm being perfectly honest, the way my day-to-day -day nutrition looks like, it kind of follows a carb backloading type setup. So what that means is, is that the first two meals of the day, so my breakfast and then the lunch that we have with my wife, those are usually kind of higher fat, lower carb meals. And then my evening meal is kind of lower fat, higher protein, much higher carb. So in my first meal of the day, which I will have on my own, I will usually have either some sort of like higher fat dairy or some higher fat dairy. So like a higher fat cottage cheese mixed together with a lower fat cottage cheese. So I have a decent amount of fat in there, but also a decent amount of protein and some veggies like some sliced up cucumbers or tomatoes. So I will either have something like that or I will have some of the leftovers from the day before, which will almost always be some sort of seafood or some kind of meat. And there will also be some salad leftover. So I will kind of eat that for breakfast. And then for lunch, like I said, that's a bit variable, but usually it's also kind of higher fat, higher protein, lower carb. And then for my dinner, that's when I'm going to have a lot of fruits and a lot of berries and 
a few of these protein puddings that I mentioned. So yeah, that meal is going to be pretty high protein and fairly high carb, basically as high carb as you can really get by eating just fruit and berries, which if you have seen me eating those things, then you would know that you can actually get quite a lot of carbs in by just eating fruits and berries. So basically I'm going to put out a giant bowl in front of me and I'm going to pour in some strawberries, frozen strawberries. I kind of defrost them a little bit, but not completely. So they are still like slightly frozen and also raspberries. Then I'm going to slice in some carrots, also some melons, some melons. I mean, on most days, to be honest, I'm eating a whole honeydew melon. That's kind of standard these days. I mean, they are in season, they're delicious. And ever since I was a kid, I absolutely loved honeydew melons. So I will have that kind of combo. I will put some cocoa powder on top, also some liquid sweetener. I will mix it all together. And then I'm going to have that while eating one of those protein puddings. And it is just a piece of heaven, at least for me. I don't know how appetizing all of that sounds to you guys, but that is actually one benefit of being kind of leaner is that your appetite sort of expands. So to me, this is like the most amazing dessert imaginable to a human being. Now I'm sure I could change that if I went to a pastry shop or some cake shop or whatever and tried something that is like actually considered to be a really hedonic treat by most people. I would quickly see that, yeah, you can make something much more tasty than this whole berry fruity combo mix. But honestly, for me, this does it every day. And I'm looking forward to that meal every single day. And basically, I'm almost using that meal as kind of my calorie regulator for the day. So on some days, I seriously can put down an amount of fruits and berries that almost shocks me. Like, holy shit, like, how could I actually squeeze all of that into this body? And on other days, I'm just not as hungry, so I just won't be eating quite as much. So yeah, that final meal on some days is going to be quite an exorbitant amount of food. And on some days, it's also gonna last for quite a long time. So many times I will just tell my wife that, hey, I'm gonna kind of sit around you. So if you need me, if you wanna talk to me, I'm here, but you know, I'm, I'm doing this thing and it's probably gonna be like this for the next hour. So just so you know. So some days are like that. And on other days, I'm really just not that hungry. So it's not gonna be quite as much. But over time, I actually had to kind of graduate to larger and larger bowls because it just got annoying that I had to refill the smaller bowls that many times with berries and fruits. And uh, so it's a bit more convenient this way. But uh, yeah, honestly, that's how my diet looks like in a nutshell. It's very simple. The food selection is very standardized and very steady. But honestly, I just don't need more variety than that because I love to eat this way for the time being. In the future, it might change. And then I guess just one last thing that I could mention here is how I'm handling social events and eating out. I would say that I eat out at least once a week. That's every week that's happening. Some weeks it will be twice a week. And what I'm doing on those days is I almost have a separate meal plan for the times when I'm out. So I pretty much know exactly what I'm going to be eating in restaurants, which for me is some sort of salad that I will eat at first. Caesar salad is my favorite in most restaurants. And then I'm going to have either fried squids or some chicken fingers. And with the chicken fingers, I will usually have some fries as well. And on those days, I will go a little bit easier on that uh, fruity explosion at the end of the day. And usually also what ends up happening is that the next day when I wake up, I'm also less hungry. And uh, so I will also eat less in the following morning. And honestly, so far, it kind of worked out fine. Maybe some of that extra indulgence with the chicken fingers and with the fries is the reason why I'm not at my absolute peak leanness anymore. But honestly, I, I don't mind that. So I can completely sustainably maintain this level of leanness while eating out with this strategy once or twice a week. And besides that, I would say that I consume anywhere from two to maybe six or maybe eight, maybe nine drinks a week. Okay, so we will also go out like twice, maybe three times a week and hang out with some other people. And then I'm going to have some drinks. And usually I try to cap it 
at two drinks. And on some more kind of special occasions, I will have three drinks. And on some very, very special occasions, I might have a lot more than two drinks, such as my wedding. You should have seen me there. But honestly, these days, it's probably going to be a lot less than that. Now, these things were happening more frequently because the Euros were going on, so the European Championship in soccer. And I was watching that with a lot of passion and a lot of dedication. So, you know, those football games, those were calling for some more socializing, hanging out with others at night, and um, often also for some drinks. What I usually do on those days is I go out and I try to get those drinks in on a relatively empty stomach. Because honestly, if I'm going to be drinking alcohol, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not doing it for the taste. I don't love the taste of wine that much. If I'm going to be drinking, I'm going to be drinking because I want to get a bit tipsy. Don't judge me or judge me. I don't care. But basically, that's my goal with it. And so to accomplish that with the least amount of alcohol consumed, that is actually the most efficiently accomplished by doing that on a relatively empty stomach. And so I'm going to do that. And two drinks is more than enough usually to put me in just the right mood to enjoy a football game and also some socializing out there. And after that, I just go home and I eat my usual evening meal with the fruits, berries and the protein puddings. And that's pretty much it. So honestly, that's all the fanciness and the amazing things that you need to know about my current diet. I don't know how exciting it was. I don't know how informative this whole thing was, but I think it was long overdue that I actually talk about this in a bit more detail. So if you ever wondered how I'm eating and how I structure things, that's pretty much how I do it. Maybe it was really disappointing to hear how unsexy all of that is. Maybe some of you actually got disillusioned at this point, but hey, now you know. So um, guys, let me know what you think of all of that. Maybe some of you can actually share some of your own quirky things. And um, otherwise, just subscribe for more content like this, or maybe not quite for content like this, but like fitness content, you know, getting lean, building muscle, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, besides that, just check out my website, check out my comprehensive guide on how to make the perfect decision on the biggest question in the world, which is, should you cut or bulk? It's a free downloadable ebook, check that one out. And of course, you will also find information on how you can work together with me if you wanna be coached by me or you wanna do a consultation with me, all of that good stuff. So that is it for today. We will see each other in the next video.